Hello everyone, this is the Cobalt Helper. Gonna have a DM deliberation today on I think on a very interesting question of should the DM be fudging dice? And I think what I'm suggesting is it depends. Now what does it depend on? That's is really what I want to talk about. I think there are two different approaches to D&D that are radically different and I want to explore each one and see what we can learn. The first approach is what I'm going to call the old school approach. So of course there's a story. Um, you know, zombies are attacking the town. You learn that there's a tower with a necromancer and you've got to stop the necromancer before he raises a horde of zombies and destroys the town. But at this point with the old school approach, you know, the dungeon, the crypt, the tower, each scene is about a perilous, deadly situation, an unfair situation that where you are, it's designed to kill you. Um, you are probably going to die unless you're extremely careful. Um, you're, you're making very risk averse decisions and you know the, the thrill of completing the scene and moving on to the next scene is simply surviving. That you as the players use the objective rules and the, you know, the expected probabilities of the dice to make very risk averse decisions to survive what was designed to kill you. And that's thrilling because, you know, we won the game. We got out of the dungeon with the, uh, the bag of gold in our lives. So survival is where the thrill or the fun comes from in this model. Now the next approach, a more modern approach, is what I'm going to call collaborative story model. This has a basis that we're here to play the game to tell a story together. There's a middle, there's an end, at the end there's going to be some kind of epic, cool, uh, you know, climax, wherever, it's going to be so awesome, and in the middle there's going to be, you know, trials and tribulations, but it's really about telling a story uh, where the you are going to be the hero and you are going to, you are going to have victory in the end. It's like reading a book, or like watching a movie. You pretty much know the heroes are going to triumph. It's just a matter of how epic it's going to be. Each scene is not designed to kill you relentlessly, and that it's the thrill is surviving it. Each scene is designed to just have the next element of the story unfold. Sure, you're rolling dice and you're making decisions, and that's going to like craft it and contribute to the story. But it's not really, it's not really. There's there's not an underlying in, intention to try to kill you. It's to try to create the next plot point. It's to try to create the next, un, un, unveil the next piece of drama because that's the fun of it. It's well, what's the next part of the story that we're going to learn. So if you think about um, a book, you know, you start to read a book and. In the first couple chapters, you get hooked in, you get you know, invested in the character development, you start to care about the characters, you want to see what happens next. You want to keep turning those pages. And then just imagine you had an author where just on chapter three, sort of um, out of the blue, they just they go into some, um, some dungeon that doesn't really seem to have any particular significance to you know, saving the world, but you know, it's, they fall into a trap it's a spiked pit trap with poison and all the adventurers die end of book that would be a terrible book it, it, it would be a horrible book um, it doesn't have it the arc it doesn't have the hero's journey it doesn't have all the writer's tricks that make for an interesting and satisfying story so again in the in the story model let's say there's a scene where you're in the woods and you're ambushed by zombies it's not about you know the thrill of surviving this it's going to be about the fact that you're going to realize the zombies were attacking a druid and then the druid's going to tell you a story about how their, their, their son was killed by the zombies which is going to you know be heart-wrenching it's going to get you involved like oh my gosh we've got to stop this this necromancer it's going to you know use dramatic elements to pull you in and, and make you want, wanting you to see more versus it's just about getting through the scene and fighting zombies with the old school style Okay, so we can see with the old school style, fudging dice rolls is is a terrible idea. Um, if the players are there, the thrill of it is for them to feel like they 
defeated a, a deadly encounter using their wits and using their knowledge of the rules and the probability of the dice. It was their decisions that caused them to survive what should have killed them. And then later they find out, well, the DM was fudging the dice. They're going to be so let down. Well, we didn't really win. You let us win. This is, I, 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 you know, I'm not happy with this at all. Versus the, the story approach where the, the DM all but has to fudge dice at some point because you're going to get into a certain scene and, you know, you're supposed to meet this druid and have that dramatic story about the, the son being killed unfold and, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to, by the, you know, by the rules and by the dice, it turns out, we you know, we're not going to kill the, the zombies. We're going to have to run away. Well, this is messing up my story. You're going to miss my, my dramatic moment. So I'm going to step in as the DM and I'm going to just pretend like the zombies missed. So, I mean, it makes sense when you consider what the underlying motivations of what the fun is of the players and the DM. So I think the key here is that you and your players are on the same page about what is fun to you. Um, if the, the fun to you is surviving a situation that otherwise is going to kill you, you outwit it. And everybody's got to be on the same page that there should be no fudging of dice because the players are expecting to win on their own merits. But if everybody just wants to have this epic scene where you know we all are the heroes and it's this cool story that I just can't wait to see how it ends. How lame is it if I just die because of some dice? So as long as everybody's on the same page, I don't know that there's really a right answer here. The other thing to consider is, you know, some, I found some players, I guess especially maybe more so with the more modern players, is they become extremely emotionally involved with their characters. That the building the character is all about, you know, the, the drama and the, and the story of, of their development versus, you know, I'm playing an elf, I'm a wizard, it's cool. Oh, you know, I died, no big deal, roll a new character. So if you have that group where they've poured hours into the backstory and it's really less about playing this game of, uh, you know, am I going to kill the most zombies and more about, you know, this, 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 this character I've crafted, then um, that's certainly got to be an aspect that you consider. There are at least a couple situations where I think no matter what style you're using, it's appropriate to fudge dice, or even more so to stop rolling dice as a DM. And I think the first one is is if you designed an encounter to have a certain threat, like let's say it's just supposed to be a minor annoyance from a random encounter, and because you you know you didn't fully understand what some monster's ability does, or you just didn't think about its ramifications or you just added a little too many monsters and just weren't thinking about how threatening it is and you know somebody is on the verge of dying from what was supposed to be a minor annoyance by your design I mean that's just that's a mistake on your part and that you should just behind the screen sort of basically decide you know I'm, I'm just gonna basically stop rolling and I'm gonna wrap this up because this is not what I intended and I screwed up I mean, you don't want to have players dying and a whole adventure ending because you made an, a mistake. Um, the second one would be if you get sort of like a, what I guess I'm going to call a, a notable result from the dice, notable in the sense that it stands out and it's going to pull the characters out of the immersion and it's going to feel like, whoa, what was that? That was, what I mean is like this is the third critical in a row that the monsters have got. I mean, you know, the dice are independent trials, but that, that stands out, and that's, that's going to, like, be, like, all the players are going to be like, oh, okay, what the heck? And they're going to start to feel like this is jarring. And that's where I also might, as a DM, just go ahead and say, no. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up by revealing my bias. I am firmly in the old school camp. To me, it is a role-playing game. And that's the emphasis, is the game. Um, I, 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 story, obviously, is important. You've got to have context. You've got to paint the picture. But it's all about the players having full agency to try to um, use their wits and knowing the rules and knowing the probabilities of the dice to make um, smart and creative decisions 
to try to beat something that truly is a difficult situation. It's a they're trying to relentlessly kill you, and it's a it's a, a complex, difficult trap. And when you do defeat it, you really have done something, and you can you can really feel like we've 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 achieved something notable. Um, I mean, that's my take on it. Um, what do you think? What's your opinion? I think that's all I got for today. One more DM deliberation. Thanks, everybody. Bye.